Good morning to you all. Right now there's a lot of buzz around hydrogen. Some say that hydrogen is uh, one of the most important solutions when it comes to decarbonizing our economy and our world. So how well positioned are Sweden, Norway and Finland and Abu Dhabi and Railers when it comes to hydrogen? Let's learn some more from two profiles who knows a lot about this. Hi, Sara Schmel. Hello. Uh, Division Manager Energy uh, Railers Sweden. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to see you again, Sara. Okay. Uh, and uh, hi, Thomas uh, Korkblank, uh, Senior Principal for Breakthrough uh, Technologies at RMI. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. <laughs> nice to see you and a warm welcome to us here at Railers. Sara, you. you often talk a lot about hydrogen. Why? Yes, uh, good question. <laughs> uh, but uh, when we talk about hydrogen, I, I just want to point out also that we talk about the, the green hydrogen, the one that's produced from uh, from uh, non fossil fuel. And uh, this is uh, something that I've come across recently a lot, and many people put their hopes to it for several reasons. Because it's, I think, the reason why it's so interesting is that it serves so many purposes. It has, uh, it is uh, an energy storage, both in in small and large scale, it's uh, it's an energy carrier, and it can be transported easily. It could mm. and it can change character. It can go from electricity uh, to the to any other form, and then potentially even back to electricity. Not that it's, it's the best use of it. Perhaps. You're obviously fascinated. <laughs> yes, very, very. <laughs> but so, uh, uh, are railers well positioned? in uh, this area? I, I think so. In yeah. fact, we have people here that uh, has worked with uh, this form of, of uh, hydrogen since uh, 2006. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's early. We were one of the pilot projects uh, Per Sjöbom uh, uh, in Sweden mm. uh, worked for uh, Fortrum uh, in, back in 2006. Mm. So I would say that if not, uh, if not we, who else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, we do a lot of cool stuff. Mm. And, and we also, I think here's, uh, we have a potential um, Possibility to expand on, on what we know from before and, and mix that with all the new technology that's mm. emerging right now. Mm. We have a couple of projects also that I know that you mm. like to talk about. Mm. Uh, Sjöbohem is one of them. Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sjöbohem is interesting. It's a small, it, it, it's for, for the international audience. It's not mm. the major client perhaps mm. in the world. It's a small uh, uh, southern Sweden municipality and their, their um, uh, housing uh, uh, company the it's very it's local governmentally owned and uh, but they have a they run a pilot project uh, where where hydrogen is part of a microgrid uh, they have installed solar panels they even have a little windmill and they um, use the excess uh, power to to store it as hydrogen and mm. their idea is to both be able to use that that you can reuse the heat that comes from the electrolysis and you can uh, also f uh, use it for for fueling vehicles and mm. that's what they intend to do as well mm. of course this is a pilot. Uh, their intention is to scale it up. Mm. And our take from this is, of course, it's cool that Matthias Wienerdalen, who is he's the, the consultant from Railers there, he, he learns a lot and it's a very avant-gardist project. But uh, I think the, the cool thing is that it's driven from this climate neutrality mm. trend and, and commitment. Uh, and I think that's a good driving force to, to capitalize on also further. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, uh, you have the international perspective uh, on this uh, on hydrogen, I think. Uh, uh, first, tell us about yourself and, and RMI, where you work. Sure, thanks. Um, so, RMI is a 40 year old nonprofit, uh, bipartisan, independent, uh, founded in the US. And the mission is to work to secure a, a clean, prosperous, zero carbon future for the world. So, Quite aspirational for a small nonprofit, but uh, we're currently um, we're currently uh, um, an international organization. We have offices and staff all over the world, um, and um, and there is a lot of movement in in this area. Mm. So, personally, I've been with RMI for five years. I led our global industry program for the last few years before we stood up this uh, breakthrough technology program that I'm mm. now a part of. Mm. So. Um, and before that, I worked with McKinsey and Company for a lot of years, and I did uh, consulting within energy transition and and heavy industry. So, mm. I think for for us, um, hydrogen is a really big topic. Yeah. 
Yeah, indeed. But do you think hydrogen, hydrogen can be crucial when it comes to decarbonizing our economy and the world? You should always be a little bit careful with picking technologies in yeah. these contexts, but I think there is an emerging consensus that we need hydrogen. I mean, if, if you claim that we don't need hydrogen, you're also saying we don't need to decarbonize. I, if, you are, uh, d if you believe that we need to achieve a zero carbon economy, we will need hydrogen. And we'll need a lot of it. So mm -hmm. just to put some numbers in here, um, we, um, um, hydrogen is uh, for the green use of decarbonization will basically require the current total global power system just for hydrogen. Wow. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, last week we had uh, Anders Lundell on the show from the organization Hydrogen Sweden. And uh, I asked him when, when he thinks hydrogen will break through. Men du, du är en stor entusiast och jobbar med det här och har kommit långt med det och är en av de ledande i Sverige på detta. När slår vätgas i Sverige då? Jag tror att det är en sån här kurva som vi ser accelererar väldigt, väldigt fort. Eh, Resan har tydligt börjat nu men jag tror att det kommer att slå stort någonstans runt 2030. När vi får till de här stora elektrolysörerna inom industrin och vi får ner priset på vätgas, volymen på fordon börjar komma upp. Då kommer den här resan att gå väldigt fort. Mm. Och det är därför det är så viktigt också att vi vågar ta de här initiativen och satsa på större projekt och kommersialisering snarare än att titta på nya pilotstudier. Anders Lundell uh, from Hydrogen uh, Sweden in the um, uh, play. Yeah, you listen to him. Uh, 2030 was his take on it, his guess. Wild guess, I don't know, but what do you think? <laughs> I think that's a common understanding that yeah. it, it takes a few years, but 10 years is, I mean, it, it is not that many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the meanwhile, before it takes off exponentially, we will still there will still be a lot of projects we know that many of the the wind parks that we establish now need some kind of, of storage and and so far hydrogen seems be better than the battery solution for example mm. uh, so I, i think that it doesn't mean that nothing will happen until 2030 no. a lot of things will happen and and we see a lot of it already um i know that uh, and but it's it is a little bit different from a railers perspective it's a little bit different between the countries and it's I can see a correlation between the ambition of the local or the, the national governments, mm. I would say. Uh, in Finland, they're very ambitious, uh, but they also have been very reliant on, on fossil fuels. Mm. Uh, whereas Sweden, well, we might get back to that, but that we, have a, we are a little bit uh, more of a slow starter uh, yeah. country. Thomas, as Anders Lundell said here in Sweden, we, we like to do projects. We need to scale up, <laughs> not just uh, focus on projects. We mm. need right. to do mm. the real thing. Do you agree? I do agree. I think there is a, <clears throat> um, I think there is a little bit of paralysis right now. Everyone is waiting for um, policies to come mm. in place, and those are really important for the broad scale up of of sort of the the many small uses of hydrogen. Mm. I do think um, for the market to take off, we will we need truly bold uh, action from a combination of politicians and uh, and. Um, um, And business leaders, and I say politicians and not policymakers, mm. because I think there's a distinction, important distinction. And we do see, actually, what we do see in Sweden uh, with the hybrid project and some other work going on, is exactly that combination. You see the same thing down in the Middle East, mm. uh, with where they're building the largest uh, electrolyzers right now, mm. because there is political will and there is a really good business opportunity. Mm. Speaking of political will, uh, the EU recently announced that they will invest, I think, 4,300 billion Swedish crowns in hydrogen. How important uh, is that investment for hydrogen to break through? So again, I, um, there is a price value gap right now in the market. So uh, for the broad take up uh, of, of hydrogen, uh, you need some level of policy support. So what we heard in the video about um, getting to scale, getting the cost down, uh, that needs to happen, I think, through a combination of some large uh, lighthouse projects and policy support for, for broader take up. Um, but, and, and that's where so a part of this money will go. So mm. breaking it down, that's not all that, all that money is just not going into building stuff. It's, it's, it's a fraction of that that goes into supporting and, and so really nudging projects over the finish line that mm. are maybe not making ends meet without that support. Mm.
But uh, I asked Sara how well positioned railers are, but how well positioned are Sweden, Norway, Finland and Abu Dhabi for that matter when it comes to hydrogen as a country, as countries and... and so. So, so currently there is almost a, a race going on right now between countries to establish national hydrogen policy, uh, agendas or strategies, right? So you, uh, this was slightly kicked off by the European Commission's broad hydrogen strategy and now that's being implemented by the member states of the European Union. But in addition, um, uh, you have other political processes that are ongoing that are sort of forcing mechanisms for heads of states to be able to to uh, think productively about this opportunity, right? Mm. <clears throat> Interestingly, from that perspective, I would say Sweden is maybe a little bit behind and the Nordic countries in terms of est establishing this strategic roadmap for the country. Um, but on the flip side, we're one of the leaders in terms of big building or announcing large-scale projects. So yeah, as L hybrid, for right, example. Right, the LKAB yeah. announcement yeah. of a $45 billion investment program yeah. for, for steelmaking, right? So, Sara, um, uh, do you often talk uh, to your consultants about hydrogen? Hydrogen, is that a discussion uh, going on constantly at Railers? I think I'm starting to get a hydrogen label on my... <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a little bit too much. We actually had uh, Anders in our leadership team meeting yesterday from, yeah. from Hydrogen Sweden. Uh, and I might be, uh, you know, nudging a little bit too much on it, but it's because I think it's a, such a, an important and interesting tool in this integrated energy system that mm. I foresee that we will have someday or need to have someday. And, and of course, that will take time. But I think it's uh, sort of Railer's uh, uh, mission mm. to facilitate and, and catalyze that integration mm. um, between the, the energy forms. And the, in, in Sweden, we are very stovepipe oriented so far. So that's why I, <laughs> you need to keep pushing. Yeah. Uh, but I also think it's an uh, excellent uh, uh, example of where we can reuse our previous experiences we can learn from the different countries because we've come differently far i think there's so much to you know we we know the process part of it mm. we know that we've been working in pilot projects we we know production side we know uh, so many parts of it it might mm. be from different parts of railers but if you combine this uh, i'm sure that we can help the, the customers a lot and this is a, a green field no one knows this no, no one know, knows how, how this is going to realize no. and that's where we we play a very important role Thomas, uh, it's difficult today to achieve a profitable production of hydrogen uh, on a large scale. Uh, what must happen for this to change? Um, so a couple of things. So, so there are parts of the production of the supply chain of hydrogen that is likely to follow a typical cost reduction pathway that you see with, with new te emerging technologies growing uh, and uh, sort of learning by doing um, if you like. It's, it's a very broad concept, but, but uh, you know, there is some elements of that that's applicable to hydrogen so and you're already seeing electrolyzer manufacturers outperforming forecasts already so we we see uh, the leading analysts are uh, you know only a year ago we're talking about price points of, of two dollars per kilogram which is, is spoken about like a magical threshold it, it's not universal it doesn't mean universal competitiveness but it's an important uh, milestone in cost and they were talking about a best case scenario of achieving this in 2030. Mm. And now we're seeing developers and, and manufacturers of electrolyzers claiming that they can achieve that cost point already you know, in 2025 or earlier. So, mm. so it's moving very, very fast um, in a combination of, of uh, scale up opportunity, industrialization of, of the manufacturing, mm. electrolyzers, what, to, to your point, Sarah, it's it, it sort of, it was, the majority of hydrogen, which is a significant market, does not come from electrolyzers. Mm -hmm. It comes from uh, steam-based uh, steam methane reforming of natural gas. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been a reasonably bespoke industry uh, where systems are tailored. There's a lot of heavy engineering involved in every project. and. And just getting that into a, a more of a mass production uh, situation will will definitely drive down costs. Mm. 
but I, I think what you're saying is that we're we're seeing um, a, a good development sort of commercially. But I think there's also another catch twenty two because it's so versatile. Mm. You you also if you want to use it as fuel, then you need all the infrastructure and and uh, that needs to happen. You know we're we're still struggling a little bit with the the chargers for for electrical cars, and then mm. we need a parallel another parallel system for for fueling heavy or light transport, and we need uh, so it, it's on, not only the technology for the process itself it's all the other equipment for storage for transporting the 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 hydrogen itself if, if we we tend to use it as a carrier and not mm. and uh, so there's uh, it is a little bit of a catch 22 also when it comes to mm. to the infrastructure around hydrogen mm. I think I, you also need a little bit of micro innovation yes, in, the, exactly. in the end use sure. on the industrial side mm. if you go away from the really large users mm. Mm. like a steel mill or mm. Or, or other, uh, you know, large-scale industrial applications. If you want to somehow compete with fossil fuels on the on the small and medium enterprise level, uh, then there is a lot mm. of innovation required mm. for the uh, for the interface. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, Thomas. Uh, how do you think? Uh, how do you think a company like Rayless should think about hydrogen? I think um, a couple of things. I think um, first of all you can play a really important role of providing uh, integrated infrastructure and system guidance because as you point out hydrogen is a versatile fuel it has many end uses i would argue that in many cases the infrastructure cost is double counted because every you, you see a lot of uh, work being done in silos along mm -hmm. end uses and then everyone needs their infrastructure and they have to build that into their business case and they're not considering the fact that yes, everyone else will use the same infrastructure. Mm. So that's oversimplifying. But there's a there's clearly a role here. And, and the other thing is that you're linking energy markets together. And, and really what you're um, creating here is a link between a fuel and electricity in a much stronger way than you used to have. So um, gasoline and diesel mm. was decoupled a little bit from power markets. Uh, now you're linking them together, mm. and and um, <clears throat> and the infrastructure is a little bit counterintuitive in the way that long distance, high volume trans transport of hydrogen is really cheap. It's actually cheaper than moving electrons in a in a power line. Mm. But the last mile distribution is very expensive. So as soon as you pull it out of the pipeline and put it in a truck, uh, there is a lot of added costs involved, and and the last mile becomes expensive. So so understanding where you draw the line in the sand between centralized large scale and distributed production, I think, will be an important part. Mm. Sarah, last but not least, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, Thomas's point of view on mm. hydrogen? Well, thank you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I agree, and it's, but it's so fascinating. I, I think it's as always. I think I come to the same conclusion in every talk I've been with you. We yeah. we have to capture these. The opportunities are there. The possibilities are endless, and and it's about us being a little bit more forward leaning and and discussing this proactively with the customers. And I I think as in in more mature um, parts of our business, that might be we ha have. Uh, a lot of competition, but here, I mean, everyone, it's open for everyone mm, to mm. just go grab it. Mm. That's what I think. So we shouldn't, uh, no one knows all the answers. No. Uh, we're happy to have the discussion with the customers. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have an important role also mm. to sort of help your customers cut through the noise, mm. yeah. right? And, mm. and support the regional decision makers, mm. uh, because there is a learning curve involved here for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and it's a new market. So. Yeah, mm. fair point. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for coming and being on the show, Thomas. And uh, thank you also, Sarah. And, um, no Please take a look at the uh, interview with Anders Lundell for Hydrogen Sweden. He's the chairman there. Uh, it's on Rayless Play on YouTube. Uh, it's quite an interesting uh, talk on this uh, topic, if I may say so. Thank you for listening and watch out for more interviews. Bye. See you soon.